Suppose we have a particle moving backward and forward in one dimension on a line. The particle might, for example, be at the end of a spring. It really doesn't much matter. The particle is moving in a potential, which we'll call u of x, shown here as the green curve. The shape of the potential determines how the particle moves. For instance, a deeper potential, like this one, causes the particle to oscillate more tightly. If you're not used to thinking about potentials, you may be wondering, where does this green curve come from, and what exactly does it mean? Those are good questions, but they're beyond the scope of this prototype. We're going to assume that the green potential curve is known. Our focus is going to be on using the shape of the potential to help us understand the motion of the particle. To see how that works, let's go back to our original potential. A drawback of this animation is that it provides a very limited understanding of how the system behaves. Any frame in the animation shows just a single particle at a single point in time. We can get a more global understanding by explicitly showing the particle's velocity in addition to its position. So here's a view showing both the position, x, and the velocity, v, at all points along the particle's trajectory. In this view, we explicitly show the value for the velocity on the vertical axis. Now if we focus on just the ball's position, shown here in grey, and projected onto the x-axis, we see that it oscillates back and forth. That's exactly as it was in the opening animation, just as we would expect. A nice thing about this picture is that it shows the particle's entire trajectory, for all times. In fact, we can see all possible trajectories of the system at once. We can see, for example, a trajectory where the particle starts out moving slower and nearer the origin. This is a global view which shows the system's entire dynamics. Let's take a look at position, velocity and potential energy all at once. When we change the potential, the trajectories in the system also change. In this case, as the potential gets deeper, that is, as the spring tightens, the trajectories also get tighter. When we make the potential shallower, they change back. So the question we want to answer in general is, what's the relationship between the shape of the potential, this green curve, and the shape of the trajectories, all the blue curves. The more deeply we can answer this question, the more deeply we'll understand the physics of one-dimensional motion. To help answer the question, let me remind you of the relationship between the particle's velocity and its kinetic energy. The kinetic energy, shown here by the dark red curve, is proportional to the square of the particle's velocity, which is shown on the horizontal axis. More precisely, the kinetic energy is equal to a half the mass times the velocity squared half mv squared. Uh, by the way, it's going to help later on to notice that the kinetic energy is symmetric about this uh, vertical axis. That is, we can change the sign of the velocity v and the kinetic energy doesn't change. Anyway, having reminded ourselves about the way the kinetic energy works, let's go back to the global view showing position, velocity and now both potential and kinetic energy. The total energy of the particle is just the sum of the potential and the kinetic energies. So we can plot the total energy by sweeping the dark red kinetic energy curve over the green potential energy curve. The resulting energy surface shows us the energy for any given position and velocity of the particle. So what have we gained by doing this? Well, the principle of conservation of energy tells us that a particle's energy is constant along its trajectory. What this means is that we can find the trajectory by simply cutting the energy surface with a plane. So let's do that. Here we go. And we can see that the trajectory is just the intersection of the energy surface with the plane. In fact, all the trajectories in the system can be understood in this way. If we take a whole lot of cuts through the energy surface, each cut corresponds to a trajectory of the system. This means that we can entirely understand the system's dynamics just by working with cuts through the energy surface. Suppose, for example, that we tighten the potential. We see straight away that the trajectories tighten, so it takes a larger velocity to get the same magnitude of oscillation. Of course, I showed you this tightening earlier, but at that point I was just stating a fact without any explanation or proof. What I've just shown is an explanation of why this is true using the energy surface. We've actually derived the tightening of the trajectories from the laws of physics. That's a much more powerful level of insight. Okay, while I've shown some ways the energy surface leads to insight, it's not yet part of an interface that can be used to explore and to generate understanding. So let's take a look at a very rough prototype interface which lets us manipulate the energy surface. Here it is. 
we can sketch out a potential by setting control points so let's add a few of those and that's the potential, the green curve we can see the corresponding energy surface uh, sweeping out the kinetic energy over the green curve uh, notice that the interface doesn't show the dark red kinetic energy curve unlike in my earlier depiction uh, that's because it would always have the same parabolic shape and it would just clutter things up so I left it out we can uh, of course adjust the viewing angle and scale uh, using keyboard commands to get a better or perhaps worse view of the energy surface the one way we can change the kinetic energy is by adjusting the mass that rescales the kinetic energy and so changes the energy surface we can also uh, cut through the energy surface to see a trajectory so let's do that and we can change the energy up and down and see how the trajectory changes notice how for low energies there are two separate trajectories for any given energy here's one of those trajectories and here's a disconnected trajectory over here with the same energy these just correspond to two valid but separate solutions for the system's dynamics we can edit the potential, say by moving the second control point, and see how the energy surface and the trajectories change in response. As we get used to manipulating the energy surface, we start to internalize the way it behaves. It starts to become a new element of cognition. In fact, not just the energy surface, but also the potential, the trajectories, and all the associated operations. All become new elements of cognition, new objects and operations we can easily think with and about. Uh, to use a programmer's metaphor, they become first-class objects in our thinking. This allows for many insights. We've already seen how these elements let us easily understand how trajectories change when the potential is changed. But as another example, after working for a while with energy surfaces, you notice that trajectories always have an interesting and quite striking symmetry. In particular, if we look down on the trajectories from above in the XV plane, we see that the trajectories are mirrored around the x-axis. To put it another way, you can flip all the velocities from V to minus V and the trajectories aren't changed at all. This symmetry continues to hold even if we change the energy of the system. So it seems plausible as a general result that trajectories are always symmetric about the x-axis. That's actually a very strong and very surprising constraint on the shape of the trajectories. So having conjectured the symmetry, it's pretty easy to see why it holds. To understand, let's go back to the oblique view. And notice that it's not just the trajectories which are symmetric. If you look closely, it's plausible that the energy surface is also symmetric in the same way. And recall from what I said earlier that the kinetic energy is symmetric with respect to changes in the sign of the velocity. As a result, when we sweep the symmetric kinetic energy curve over the potential, the resulting energy surface must also be symmetric with respect to changes in the sign of the velocity. And as a result, the trajectories must be symmetric just as we guessed. Now, in the traditional formulation of one-dimensional motion, this kind of observation is quite non-trivial. But in a medium where we have easy, direct access to the energy surface and trajectories, it becomes easy to see.